Hello and welcome back to Tribal Wars. It's uh, standard this week and uh, there's another building lab deck with uh, me and Kumagora. Now looking at this you might think, might well think to yourself that what an holy abomination of a deck are you bearing witness to? And the answer is a uh, Juara with a light captain deck. Uh, this is the um, build around card and we went for the Artificer tribe to accommodate it. So we've got lots of <coughs> as many uh, artifacts as we could fit into the deck. The basic game plan is to slow things down in the early game with uh, Gleaming Barrier and Voltaic Servant just as blockers. Um, and then try and win the game the late game with flyers, got aerial engineer, Tiana, uh, an aviation pioneer, and Sai, master thoughtress that create flying tokens. Um, the unfortunately, the um, artificer tribe itself doesn't have any artifacts in it, so to accommodate a, a high. Um, high ratio of artifacts in the deck to get a bit um <clears throat> go for some maybe not the most powerful cards ever so the removal comes in the form of blood tower candle and explosive apparatus which are incredibly inefficient but they are artifacts and uh we cut kind of low on the land count so we've only got 20 lands even though the deck goes up to five and it's got quite a lot of threes and fours uh, but there's also Traveller's Amulets, uh, Chromatic Lantern to a certain extent Dowsing Dagger to act as, as mana sources there are also artifacts um, there's also th uh, Thematic Compass but that's not exactly uh, well it's very mana hungry in and of itself so while it can search up lands it's not by itself a great way of um, sort of balancing out the land count is if you're spending three mana a turn to <laughs> search on a basic land and I mean it's more here once the um, you've got a little bit going and you've slowed the, slowed the game down you can sort of a pseudo removal sort of uh, removes an attacker uh, what else is there uh, Dowsing Dagger is there as I said partially as a land source it might just mana source but also uh, as a way of um, sort of capitalising on the flyers particularly the flying tokens I mean if you're only getting a aviation pioneer token as your uh, way of chipping in for damage. One damage is a lot less, a turn is a lot less than three damage from the Dowsing Dagger. Uh, what else is the Fountain of Renewal, a bit of a weird one. Just gain one life a turn, which is not... It can be useful if you are able to sort of um, stall out the game. But it's mostly here for the, just for the sacrifices to draw a card. And then it pairs up with Daring Archaeologist just to make sure you've got something in your graveyard to get back with it to help ensure that. And then, oh, Skilled Animator is where a lot of the, well, some of the deck's power comes from. It's just a 3-3 three, three that turns one, oh, sorry, a 1-3 for three that turns a um, an artifact in play into a 5-5. Five, five. So, I mean, that's also part of the reason why you've got all these one-drop artifacts that aren't amazing, is that you can turn it on um, you want a high chance of having a turn one or two artifacts so if you curve into a turn three skilled animator it actually has something to turn into a 5-5 five, five. Uh, and Sage of Latin Arm is another way of turning sort of a late game traveler's amulet or a gleaming barrier into um, card advantage uh, also Sage of Latinam plus Dowsing Dagger plus Tiana 
it's a nice thing you sacrifice the dancing dagger every turn and then return it to your hand and then play it again to tr trigger Psy or Dwar or whatever but yeah it is <clears throat> I will not say that this is not a somewhat janky deck which <laughs> I was the one that suggested Dwar and then it turns out that the uh, this standard environment is not does not make it an easy task to, to build a Dwar deck or at least not a tribal one and particularly artificers that there's not there's no super obviously uh, extremely powerful artifacts in standard right now so it's a um, sort of a cobbled together pile of cards and we'll, we'll see how it does I mean <clears throat> I think Kuma's fairly down on the deck he thinks it's pretty bad <laughs> I, I'm I'm somewhat happy with it it's um, Not necessarily because it's good, but it's just because I've had, had some fun with it. Uh, it's it's a sort of deck that requires. It's not so sort of uh, inherently powerful that <laughs> your own actions don't matter. That it's definitely something that requires a little bit of luck and some tight play to actually do well with, uh, and good matchups as well. But we'll see. You get to draw a lot. Get get to draw a decent amount of cards and gets lots of value triggers and so it's at least got that going for it we'll see how it does and here we are for round one with what looks like an unkeepable hand just one land yeah I mean if we get to two then Gleam and Barrier can buy some time and Thematic Compass might be able to get us to the fourth but I think it's just way too risky Okay, it seems even worse. <laughs> One land and three drawers is just bugging that as well. Alright, keeping this. Yeah, yeah just easy to turn on fan the renewal. Thematic compass might be able to save me. <laughs> Looks like a fairly aggressive vampire deck. Love this situation. I think there's a reasonable chance I'm going to die without casting a second, uh, third spell. Abilities trigger. So it turns off these skilled animators. This oh, it looks more like a soldier deck than a vampire's. Not that really changes my line at all. Yeah, red white soldiers, I assume. So I'm taking five, seven, down to four, then back up to five, then Yeah, I'm just gonna concede. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I now know that the deck can't survive on just one land. It's good information. So 
we get a more workable draw. Uh, okay, well, this also has the potential to go horribly, but I think it's keepable. <laughs> I'm just going to go for the Traveller's Amulet so that I can go up to the uh, third land for the Psy and then use these to trigger it. Opponent's main phase right now. It looks like Love Taps is the one on the uh, struggling with mana this time, although I'm sure their deck is much more suited to it. But Sai is holding off the Sky Marcher, so. So I could play the Juara, but I think I would really prefer to trigger the Sai a couple of times just to get that those flying defences up and the uh, creating one one token this looks real good against what Lord Taps is doing right now Point weighing up, yeah, whether it's worth it to just sacrifice the the hawk to uh, not like the Dallas and Dagger trick, uh, flip, or transform, or is it transform? I actually don't mind that so much. Now I even get to untap the 3 2. Attacks. Okay. Yeah, sure, let's just <clears throat> get more daggers out there. Uh, oh, I did not consider that, that actually <laughs> gives Love's Taps the uh, City's Blessing. Witness. So I presume we must have a handful of things that cost three or more. Sure, why not? Let's just keep dowsing. Uh, yeah, let's spread out a little bit now.
think. Oh, it's, yes, let's transform that one. And always no, always yield, always no. no. I think I want the power more than anything else for the rest of them. So, three mana there. I think I'll just use it for to sacrifice the gleaming barrier and something else to the, uh, the psi. Just one of these flyers, I suppose, one of these doctor tokens, I suppose. Fires, hit for eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine. Let's go. Jara and Tiana. Get a trigger from Jara. Tap a thought to let's just tackle all of these. See if we can end the game. We can. <laughs> okay. So first game taught me that my deck can't survive on one land. Second game taught me that I can it can beat opponents who are stuck on two land, so getting all sorts of data here. Okay. So obviously I'm on the draw this time, which is unfortunate, but I think this is a reasonable hand. We've got a bit of removal and then some uh uh, defensive, good defensive creatures to slow things down. Uh, question is, is it crazy to save the explosive apparatus until after Psy? I don't think it is crazy, but I'm not going to do it just because if I don't get to my fourth uh, mana, I might want to go turn two Gleaming Barrier, turn three Psy, turn four um, Pop the Explosive. And there we go, there we've got something to trigger Psy if we need it. Prevents all non contact to be dealt to other creatures you control. Hmm, so I might just have to explosive that before I do anything else. Counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. So I think I need to kill this before this becomes a 3 5 flyer. I think that's just going to be too much of an issue. Maybe 
of this, not just another one. Radiant Destiny. So this is going to be a 3 5 anyway, I presume it's the soldiers, yeah. I still st stop the Sky Marcher though. Another Sky Marcher. I guess I'm running outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I feel like I can't really afford to play a Dancing Dagger somewhere because it gives him um, gives Love Taps the city's blessing. He might well get it anyway though. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. three flying blockers uh, I can't quite see how I can get more than two Three, four, five. <clears throat> so I can found an aerial aerial engineer, and that'll give me two flyers. I can found an aerial and dowsing dagger. That will also give me two flyers. annoying <laughs> uh. yeah that doesn't help okay so I'm just dead I just felt like this game was winnable if I didn't have just quite such a clunky a clunky draw earlier. Like I struggled on lands for like a, just a little bit. And obviously, obviously I ended up with <laughs> tons of cards in hand and not enough in play. Oh well. Okay, well, I've got a uh, cursed buy for round two. So, yeah, I'm watching Kuma. So I can um, discredit every decision he makes. <laughs> Green white from AJMP. Not really sure what that means. Uh, 
Oh, and there's Kuma's main difference between between our decks. He's got the treasure maps. Looks like <clears throat> AJ's struggling on lands though, so. Fortunately for him, the uh, the artificers aren't very good at applying pressure, so <laughs> we'll have time to draw out of it. Well, that was seems not correct to uh, search your library after you scry. Oh, Naya from AJ. It's going to be the Jawara, maybe. Jawara right now, just an aerial engineer. Ooh, angels maybe. I don't know if Boris has got some angels. Don't remember what angels green has though. Possibly it's just there for the ramp purposes rather than the actual tribe. Another aerial engineer. And the blood tower candle. And almost enough lands to use it. <laughs> oh, what does that imply? Obviously some kind of trick. I presume you just take care of this. The only reason to block would be if you think AJ's representing a sweeper. But I don't know what that would be in white, green, red in standard. Path L oh, maybe that was it. He just wanted to trade the angel plus the uh, one damage from Path of Metal for an engineer. Doesn't have. First strike, double strike, vigilance or haste, yeah. And what does it flip into? Attack with at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, vigilance or and or haste into two damage to each opponent. Choose a creature at random and attack this turn, destroy that creature. Okay. Still it doesn't necessarily look like AJ's gonna have enough time to uh, get this going. Because Kuma's got the blood tire candle to take out any flying blockers, and then well, this doesn't seem correct to do this now. Well, no, maybe if he thinks that uh, AJ might still have some kind of trick. But see, I mean. In my mind, it seems like you want to wait to see if AJ's got a bigger flyer to take out with the <laughs> uh, the blood teller candle. That's a okay, so maybe that's the uh, the ideas. Half of the metal plus resurgence. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of looking like um, a 
AJ's got something as unusual as we we do. <laughs> Cleansing Nova. Destroy all creatures. So there, yeah, there, there is, he does have a sweeper. Although... Treasure map should help. Oh, okay, yeah, treasure map is just going to win it. Turn it, treasure Turn it, it's good that I managed to turn it into a 5-5 five five and then swing with it. Yeah, go artificer. <laughs> Although that, uh, what was it, cleansing Nova? Is that what I just saw? The fact they can destroy artifacts might be a big problem for the deck. Yeah, cleansing Nova. Five mana, choose one, destroy all creatures, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So, looks like AJ's managing to curve out a bit better with his lands, although he's still not doing anything, so... I mean, he might just have some removal. That, um... 5 damage to target attacker. Nope. Definitely Clarion. Two nine for each creature. Oh, well, the treasure map survives it, so it's not so bad. Just got one for one removal. Although Kuma's the one that's struggling to hit lands this time. Or Dawnbringer, so pretty confident it's Angels at this point. And uh, that is going to be an annoying one for Kuma to be able to stop. <laughs> to find like a I guess like a blood tallow candle or flip a um, compass Or turn a Felter into a 5-5 five, 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 five with a skilled animator and then equip a dagger to it. <laughs> oh no, never mind. <laughs> Sigh and a stream of uh, artifacts might be able to do it.
Thunder Angel. Doesn't quite have the mana to grow it to 6 6 there. Oh yeah, but <laughs> Lyra plus a Resplendent Angel is a problem. I mean, you can... Uh, oh yeah, and Lyra gives all of these um, lifelinks, so I think Kuma is in a very bad spot here. I don't know. I'm struggling to think of a way that you can work through this. That I was going to say, you could if he can make Thopters and hold, hold up enough mana to be able to sacrifice them to Sai, he could block the uh, the Lyra and then sack the blockers to make sure he doesn't actually Adrian doesn't actually gain the life. But <clears throat> it's gonna be more of a problem when each time he attacks, he gets to make another five-five flying life link. It's gonna be like another deafening clarion, yeah. It's not quite enough damage to win, but it's but this might be. Yeah, you can just do two damage to Kuma. This is fourteen plus two from Oh no, sorry, he doesn't have the red for it yet. But the only way in the deck to gain life is that one mana fountain, <laughs> which gives you one life a turn. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, let's see if Kuba can snatch a victory from AJ. And starting off by Mulligan down to six is not a... <laughs> Great way to start. Uh, and bottom to scry. Although not that it matters if he's going to crack the evolving wilds. Take seven. Treasure map that will take seven. You can untap. So we could. Kuma could transform the treasure map next turn. Doesn't have the. Man, I thought to activate it again this turn, but. Next turn you can tap it and untap it. And make use of it, assuming that the Evolve Take 7 and the Treasure Map survive AJ's turn, not a guarantee I'll just a Resplendent Angel Uh, 
And I'm just going straight for the draw arrow. Exemplar of Justice, Mentor, Flying, being able to come out of your turn, choose one target creature control, until the turn actually face 2 0, Trample and Vigilance if it's white. So. so it can do it to itself and just be a 4 5 Flying, Trample, Vigilance at worst. <laughs> I suppose that help it helps it. Puts you putting out to four power lets it mentor the responding angel as well. sure I agree with playing the second treasure map over just transforming the first one it just seems like he needs to dig for something to put into the air Going to hit for eight here. Yeah, I suppose playing the second treasure map did dig for him since he triggered Juara, so maybe I'm just maybe I'm the idiot. <laughs> Looks like he's just trying to dig for something to um, not die. Uh, looks like he hasn't found it yet. I mean, he's still got three mana, but. Wait, what just happened? Why didn't that? Oh, AJ's got Hexproof, so. <laughs> from the uh, July so you can't put because his targets target opponent creates two zero two green plant creature tokens <laughs> still it looks like he hasn't found any flyers so AJ just wins okay here we are for round three against uh, AJ uh, which as we know from watching the previous round he's playing angels Probably not good for me. Because <laughs> he probably has the better flying late game. Still, keeping this. It's a functional hand. Uh, 
So, question is whether to just activate the comp activate the compass or go for the sign. Uh, I think go for the sign. We, I mean, from the spectated game, we saw he's got that uh, three damage sweeper, which doesn't kill the sign. Also has the five damage to target attacking a creature. I think attacking or blocking. So I'm not going to attack with the psi. Uh, just going to get chromatic. Play a dowsing dagger. Gleaming Barrier doing anything, so I'll go for the dagger first. So my fear here would be that he's just got a um, cleansing nova or something, and he can destroy all the artifacts with it. Okay, I think that's fine. I'm just going to hold up a them a thematic camp a compass activation or potentially a psi activation if he destroys all the artifacts. Path of Metal. So that'll take out the flat so that's not such a huge deal. He's got the go. Oh, he's got the definite clarion. That'll be a bit more annoying. All right. <laughs> hey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just equip the servant. And do this. Just F6 through the turns. <laughs> hmm, he's going to cast something that is bad for me. Cleansing Nova, yep. Didn't even get to flip my compass before he destroyed everything. Uh, maybe I should have just held that gleaming barrier back just to trigger Sai or uh, Juara. Seriously, Darius going to do absolutely anything in play, so. I'm sure he's going to just play some horrible angel that I can't beat him. Yep, that looks like an angel I can't beat. <laughs> well, maybe I'll get a uh, blood tower candle. Or an island. Oh, 
I'll try this on there. I will just keep that one in hand in case I draw anything that triggers off casting an artifact. And Looks like now I'm just gonna draw nothing but land for the rest of the game. Has he got another? Something else to pump it. Maybe he's got another integrity intervention, he can just intervention me. I mean, he's got to be able to kill me here, surely he wouldn't just use the integrity to get to seven instead of five. Yeah, it was just another one. Okay, so this seems like a really awful matchup. <laughs> like, <laughs> the fact that both Kuva and I Ended up facing AJ here. It seems really unfortunate. <laughs> it's... Because this just seems like a horrible matchup. <laughs> At least saying, well, it's Mulligan to five. So I've got that game for me. Now he kept six. And scribed to the top. And I kept this on the strength of... The incredible strength of Traveller's Amulet. I'm actually just going to save the explosive apparatus until after I cast a sigh. Draw the planes. <laughs> And an angel it is. Uh, I guess just the apparatus and an aviation pioneer. No, Path of Metal. Takes out the two flyers. God, that is annoying. <laughs> it's just, just... Ooh. Uh, I think... I don't love it. But I think that the situation just calls for aggression. He's... Um, Missing a bit of land, uh, missing land drops. So I really do just want to kill him before he gets up to things that can beat me, man. <laughs> That's probably what he's doing anyway. Uh, it could be a Aurelia, maybe, or just. Giving spend an angel plus two plus two is gonna have Okay, yeah, that's annoying. Cause now he also gets to make another an angel token. So yeah. This is kind of a nightmare. Um I just guess I'm just playing how does this thing work again? Let's have at least two clues that first strike, double strike, vigilance, and our haste. So this has got vigilance. 
but it won't flip from that, so let's play Joyra. <laughs> whether Death and Clarion does damage to the player as well, but... <laughs> okay, so he's just gone for lifelink so he can get another angel, which will then flip Path of Metal and I won't be able to uh, beat that. And also, I probably won't be able to beat just all these angels. <laughs> uh, so I guess I need to play the lantern and have it... Oh, actually, yeah, either the lantern or the barrier and have it hit a one-drop artifact. This is the only way I can... from the, from the drawer. Oh, I did it. Nailed it. So now I can at least survive the attack and then lose to Path of Metal. So... He's just going to have some deal damage to me spell. Oh, destroy all artifacts is what he's going to do. The cleansing Nova. Maybe not. First strike and vigilance after this. Is, yeah, so I'm just dead. So yeah, that was horrible. Um, but it's a it's just a miserable matchup I mean even beyond that the uh, Artificer deck being sort of an underdog against everything um, ability to wipe out all the early creatures the barriers don't do it like the Fortate Servant and the Gleam Barrier don't really do anything the Cleansing Nova to destroy all your artifacts is horrible and then they, then the Angels just winning the the uh, late game flying so I, <laughs> I think possibly more than any other mod this is a matchup where you just have to have the opponent stumble <laughs> not get up to the sort of four and five stuff where um, the flyers come out and the um, cleansing nova comes out and stuff so yeah that was unfortunate <laughs> All right, here we are watching Kuma for the last um, the last match, and see if he can salvage all all our hopes of uh, getting a legitimate win. Uh, so it doesn't seem too horrible for him at the moment. got two treasure codes going, a sigh, he's only got four life, but he's got five creatures, he's got a couple of explosive apparatus in play, and Brian's only at ten, Burning Sun's avatar is presumably going to be eating at least one creature every turn. And a territorial hammer skull can tap something down. But he's 
going down to six with three flyers and two shocks in play. <laughs> So assuming that Kuma doesn't die on this next turn. Uh, he's taking out the Territorial Hammer Skull. Using both apparatuses. Which gives him more breathing room on a, the attackers. But now he's only got five points of uh, flying. So I'm not sure how much I love that. <laughs> I would have at least waited until the beginning of combat. Uh, type Dynasty of Coral deals damage equals this power to type creature you don't control. It puts 2 on 1 counts on up to 1 target dinosaur you control. Kill the sign, maybe. Yeah, take out the sign. And then Kuma is going to have to. Chump, chump. No, sorry, you could block and jump. To save the barrier. Sure how much that's actually going to matter. <laughs> but he's got uh, potentially three draws here with the off the draw step and then the two treasures. If he finds another dowsing dagger that would win it, or another explosive apparatus. Does need at least three blockers. Put Brian down to three or kill the Huatli. Or just leave everything back so that he doesn't die to a removal. The Huatli's not super relevant just because the plus two. I mean, it's uh, Kuma's in the position of having to chunk with things anyway, so 
It's not super relevant. Ooh, <laughs> that is not good. Opposing flyer. So I guess it's chump chump trade. He gets the barrier, he gets it to the uh, trade from the barrier so he can get another draw. Again, another dowsing dagger would do it. Equip it to the other thopter and then, oh no, sorry, this stopped us dying so no, it wouldn't. Second was dying anyway, it's just chomping. So he needs to get at least another flyer out. It just looks like he hasn't done, because now Huatli can just kill the Thopter. And then swing with three for the Aerosaur. In fact, kill anything and attack with all of them, and then he's only got two blockers and can we die? Is Kimura on the play, Mulligan down to six, down to five. Keeps and come on, scribe to the top. No, scribe to the bottom. <laughs> I guess again, it doesn't matter if he's evolving wilding.
si is a good way of um, coming back from a mulligan. <laughs> Assuming you can actually, he actually has the artifacts to trigger it. Is he going to attack with the sage? No. Presumably playing on just uh, uh, sacrificing the blood tower candle for a draw. Uh, a territorial hammer skull from Brian. Not quite the scariest yet, but <laughs> on its own, but stuck on three lands. Nothing from Brian though, so looks like he's got something of a clunky hand over there as well. Ooh, treasure map, that's not bad. Kuma tops with the uh, the treasure map. Okay, so a slash of talons. It's not too bad. Just taking out the uh, side token. Bonded Horncrest, 4 mana 5 live, they can't attack or block alone. Okay. He's in Treasure Map in his upkeep, although he already topped with it, I think. Slash of Talons, maybe? Yeah. I guess that makes sense as to why uh, Brian wasn't doing anything for so long, he's just got a very reactive hand. With a uh, very conditional removal. But I would not be surprised if there was like a 6-6, uh, 6, 6 3 damage to target creature and to target player or whatever it is coming yeah Benny Sun's avatar so I don't know maybe take out level take so on the sage yeah you should s probably sack it with the sage now though
uh, jump in with the gleaming barrier to get the uh, treasure, I guess. And sacrificing it, yeah, I guess that makes a reasonable amount of sense as well. Just sacking the um, treasure to transform the treasure map and get even more treasure. For a dowsing dagger. Probably mostly for the, uh, the thoughts to take into honest. <laughs> Additional three three. So I guess the engineer is going to get tapped down and then maybe throw three creatures in front of the hammer skull and then like chump. Burning Sun's avatar maybe. You should have at least sacrificed one of the Thoughters to the Sage. He also should have at least. Well, I guess maybe he could have blocked the territorial uh, hammer skull with the side, but maybe he's worried about like another slash of talons or a trick or something. attack here I think so now the hammer skull can tap down the 5-5 five five and doesn't really have any great blocks Again, I really think he needs to take out this hammer skull. 
triple block it, and like chomp the Burning Sun's avatar, take eight and go down to five. No, he's just blocking and chomping and taking five down to eight. Again, you should sacrifice the top to the sage. Looks like Brian's got something anyway. Tiger creature gets plus two plus zero in time of turn. Okay, so the side is going to die. And that will make things a lot harder for Kuma. <laughs> Does still have four cards in hand though, so... Is that Aerial Engineer maybe? Or a Daring Archaeologist? Get back... Can he afford to get back Blood Tallow Kendall? Just going for the barrier. Which I can't really argue with. I mean, it's a it's not horrible in this position. No attacks this time. Just another land for Brian, so yeah, he doesn't even. He decided he doesn't actually have any good attacks here. This is only game two and it's gone down to five minutes like remaining. the explosive apparatus, or maybe the flyer that might be the most dangerous thing for him or he could just grow it I suppose if you can get territorial hammer skull up to the point where it's not got any Kuma hasn't got any favourable blocks against it then that could be a way to win might want to just sacrifice the barrier and then you get two draws out of it so you can sacrifice the uh, treasure the treasure cove just going straight to the throat with the uh, aerial engineer Ooh, 
Full snob horn. Two two vigilance. <laughs> Yeah, this at this point he's uh, Brian feels pressured enough to actually just kill the aerial engineer. to attack the Huatli. He could kill it with the explosive apparatus, but he's obviously sacrificing a 5-5 to do it. Jorah's coming down. He's got nothing to trigger it with. down a daring archaeologist. I feel pretty confident at this point he has to eat the territorial hammer skull with the explosive apparatus. Uh, yeah. Throw the gleaming barrier in front of the burning tree makes uh, burning sun makes sense. And then you can just maybe uh, maybe trade drawer for this to the Nali's night. As unpleasant a feeling as that is. Okay, just throwing a couple of things in there. Yeah, again, it looks like he forgot to uh, sacrifice his sage. And sacrifice the treasure of the treasure cove. <laughs> Another daring archaeologist. He's grabbing a dowsing dagger. I suppose he wants to uh, start actually <laughs> turning the uh, thopter into something of an actual threat. I think you probably want to equip it to maybe the Jorara for this defensive turn. Oh, it's got another, another explosive. Okay, I mean that's reasonable as well that you've got Brian probably doesn't even have any very good attacks here. I 
depends what he drew, I suppose. Uh, but you can block there, block there. Yeah. So. Ooh, a blood tower candle. That being said, all this is probably irrelevant because Kuma's only got a minute and 20 seconds left, so and he's just going to time out. I think he'll probably win this game. But then just time out. Not really any point in attacking on the ground because there's just so many defenders to jump with. See. Just going straight for Brian's face again. Oh, he's got four points of burn, not quite enough. <laughs> should just use the explosive apparatus here. He doesn't have time to deal with block <laughs> blocking. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have time for anything, but yeah, it looks like he's just going to explode him. Maybe. Okay, don't really know why he's doing this, but... Three, two, one, loot. There we go. <laughs> All right, here we are, having a <clears throat> final showdown with Kumagoro. This seems like an unusable hand. This seems like a usable hand. Uh, yeah, on top. Go for our classic strategy of um, dowsing dagger on a flyer. <laughs> Got his treasure map. So the question, I suppose, will be whether to actually transform the dowsing dagger. I think with missing lands, it is correct to transform it. Should play an aerial engine here. The blood tie uh, candle is another good argument for transforming it. Well, in fact, do I even want to? Yeah, aerial engineer. I could just blood tallow and an aviation pioneer, and then I'll have the six man next turn to actually just kill off the five five. Yeah, I think I prefer that. And then I can 
get the candle back with the archaeologist. Ooh, sigh. That's... Maybe I'm better off killing the sigh. <laughs> actually do prefer killing this side and it's just overall more dangerous. Take servants, not pair of uh, No, sorry, Voltaic servant and gleaming barrier. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dairy archaeologist, get back the book tower candle. Play these two. Turn to the archaeologist to five, five, and then you can trade with the. Um, treasure map. I don't think there's enough of a reason to actually sacrifice the Traveller's Amulet. I'm better off just saving it for my own skilled animator or to sacrifice to a Sage or a Psy. Dowsing Dagger. Okay. Equipping it to the flyer. Might just have to trade off with my thopters for it. No, not attacking. Probably do need to take out the treasure map because you can transform it next turn uh, by using the voltage servant to untap it. So yeah, let's just do that now before you can get any more use out of it. attack with the daring archaeologist you can double block 
I think that's probably f overall fine. Or you can just throw the gleaming barrier in front of it. That might be less fine. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. Yeah, or just one of the plants. Okay, now it looks like he's just taking out one of the thopters. I think I want to chump. Partly because going down to two puts me into the apparatus range. And he's also got slight... Uh, well, this is his own archaeologist. I can't remember if he's running slightly more or not, but I know he's got at least one. What was that? What just happened? Oh, we cast Sage of that now. Okay. I don't mind my own explosive apparatus. Okay, he's decided he wants the treasure more. <laughs> And it's an explosive apparatus. So I'm pretty glad I did not go down to two. That's just second like artifact. Draw a card. Uh, <clears throat> now, there's a decision to be made here as to whether it's even worth casting these two cards in my hand. Because if I draw Sai or draw I want them in my hand. Archaeologist. Uh, now I'm going to leave at least one turn. Oh, that was so dumb. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was a reason to cast one of these. <laughs> so now I'm just dead because uh, you can explode the apparatus me. It did not occur to me that I only had one, one artifact left in play. Is he going to 
explode me? Not yet. For some reason. Maybe he's just forgotten about it. I mean, a big, even if he has forgotten about it, the big problem now is he can just equip the Doubting Dagger to the Engineer and then um, uh, it beats my Engineer in the air. Okay, no, it looks like he's just slow rolling, mate. Right? <laughs> How incredibly rude of him. Okay, this looks like an acceptable hand. Sage into Psy into... Ideally, lots of artifacts. Um, Kuma went down to six, and he put a card on top. Good for the uh, play lots of artifacts after a sign plan that I've got going on. He's got his own sign. Okay. Let's just pay to life. Gleaming Barrier. What was yield? Sacrifice gle said Gleaming Barrier. Well, I was considering sacrificing the treasure to cast both of these, but since I've got two one drops, let's just cast both of those. Just skilled animator up a thopter and then have that sort of win in the air. Yield to that. Hmm. I think actually. Well, let's see what he does. But might just take out his sigh with the um, blood to the candle rather than do anything else. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. 
It's a good way to win the uh, Psy Mirror. Is to have the opponent not have a Psy. <laughs> Don't know, another side. Ugh. How entirely unreasonable. I'm just going to sacrifice the fountain to the sage. I think that one life turn is going to be super relevant. And let's just win with a 5 5 fly. Vigilance-ish 5-5 five, five flyer. No oh, treasure map's dangerous. at this point whether I want to sacrifice a thought to the sage. Mm, yes I do. You see and that's why. <laughs> Thopter, and then I slightly move it over to the little thopter. Sacrificing the amulet on upkeep and then presumably scrying afterwards. Um, that's what he searched for, and that's what he found. See the smaller factor. Okay. Well, I was going to have an um, interesting decision on how to uh, suit up the dowsing dagger. Because this would make it a 7 6, but these two could still trade for it. But instead, let's just <laughs> grow the other one as well. <sighs> ok. 
Okay, just chomping and going down to two. Another upkeep scry. This uh, transforms the map. So, zoom at the very least, he's got a uh, artifact here. Oh, another treasure map. Okay. And swaying that one to the top as well. Same thought to Okay. So he needs to block both thoughts, so I guess he'll trade one and chunk with the other. Barrier, slack it with the sage. See what I draw, but get some more thopters going. A little skilled animator, sure, why not? So he's sucking a treasure just to get another scry in there. On top. Uh, just occurred to me, should I have been attacking with ground creatures as well? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Maybe. An aerial engineer. Uh, and you can draw a card off Treasure Cove. Maybe just equip the daggers. That would make it a 8 6. You equip both of them, but that would require sucking both of these treasures. Okay, just a six five. Okay, no, he just has to uh, sacrifice one of his treasures rather, because he can use the treasure cove actually as a land for mana. Plus, uh, so we'll eat. The smaller flop to chump the bigger one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'd only take one damage. Ah. I'll do the trick. <laughs> Okay, 
No, wait. No. I should have <laughs> cleared out the other one. I thought it was uh, six damage for some reason, but whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, well, <laughs> should have just killed the top turn one, but I'll sacrifice the treasure to the sage at the end of turn. And he's got to... Oh, he's drawing as many cards as he can. at least three flying blockers. Because he needs to block. Well no, he just needs at least two fly two flying blockers and something else. Okay, looks like he hasn't he has a flying blocker and one removal spell, but the five five should get th through. He's targeting himself with the. They're targeting the uh, little thought to with the uh, explosive and conceding. <laughs> For some reason, he does not going to rely on me to uh, make another mistake, despite the one I just made. Not 30 seconds before. Okay. Uh, well, this has the potential to go badly, but I am keeping it. Hey, there we go. Latello into Sage, I guess. Into Chromatic Lantern. I just want to save the um, artifacts in case it's a site or a Juara. Okay, taking a bit of damage, but. Gleaming Barrier instead of Lantern, which will save me, and then Chump uh, Sacrifice, which will save me 5 life from that and 2 from the Steam Vents. It's probably worth it.
own skilled animator. So I could skill down the from the treasure to stop the candle. But then I'm getting hit for four in the air. Yeah, I think that's probably necessary. Say so seven's not too bad. Um, his own dagger. Ooh, my own flyer. Although I'd have to suck the treasure at the moment to actually play it. So let's go for the chrome lantern. I can probably sneak in five damage here by attacking with the treasure, it'll take it and then I'll play the Voltate 7 to untap it. Or maybe it's just going to trade off, because that looks like him uh, accidentally activating it rather than when he meant to trade with it. Nope. Transforming it, unsurprisingly. And a treasure map. That's dangerous. So if I don't draw a land here, I might actually just have to sacrifice the treasure to activate the candle to take out the flyer. Treasure. Three. Uh, yeah, is there anything that makes sense? Uh, definitely want to wait in case it. Um, Discourages him from attacking with any of the other things. Should probably 
probably be paying attention to where he's scrying. Cut on the bottom. Flip the treasure map because he's going to someone tap it. Sorry, transform it. Flipping it something else. There's the one from uh, Kamigawa, I think. Okay. So I could dairy archaeologist to get like, the blood tallow candle. We don't actually have enough mana to use it. So I think I'm just going to be better off. Uh, playing flyers for a couple of turns <laughs> and hopefully I can win with that before he can put out any of his own flyers cut on the bottom Is he going to kill my flyer? Here? I do not mind that. So you have to spend two treasures to do it. And I have another one. Does he have one of his own? Now he's got Daring Archaeologist, so he can get back the candle. Take out my next fly. Okay, so he's got the six side daring archaeologist, but I can at least chomp it with a couple of the plants for at least a couple of turns. Uh, I think I want to route the daring archaeologist that something for him to spend the candle on that's not the flyer. And even though the Fountain of Renewal will do more in play, I might get the candle out first in case I uh, draw another land next turn I can actually use it. Looks like he's just going to go straight for the archaeologist. Ooh, another skilled animator. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just throw a servant and a plant in front of them. Sacrifice a servant, it's not really doing anything anyway. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could just activate the land, uh, the uh, candle. Take out the archaeologist, I suppose. Or aerial engineer and a servant. Yeah, I think I prefer actually presenting my own clock. Since I can just continue to uh, jump sack with the servant and the uh, sage. down to six and then I can play the dowsing diagram and equip it next turn for the uh, surprise lethal. So just Fountain of Renewal and then use the Blood Tower Candle and jump with the animator I guess. Equipping the dagger and evolving wild, so I think I should have won. Should should win now. Give him some relevant ground defenders and swing for six. I do have enough artifacts to actually have flying this time. So there, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it wasn't a very successful deck. I had some fun with it. <laughs> okay, so here we are. <clears throat> Back with the deck. And... Uh, I'd say that was not the most successful event ever. <laughs> Neither Kuma nor I actually managed to get any match wins in there. Um, I do think the fact that we both both faced AJ Impey's uh, Angel deck was kind of unfortunate because that seems like a horrible matchup. <laughs> um. But, I mean, I think we went into this knowing that the deck was not the most powerful thing ever. Uh, fortunately, there is not any super obvious ways, at least not to me, of, of fixing it. I mean, 
I think maybe the blood tower candle explosive of explosive apparatus thing that uh, was quite possibly just a mistake that um I mean that's just se seven mana for a conditional removal is kind of <laughs> it's really really bad <laughs> um I mean I do think the it seems like the standard tribal format at the moment it seems to be quite heavy on the um sort of weenie weenie type decks with like um the soldiers and uh, vampires and stuff so in that regard I think the the overall strategy that I'm sure we're trying to employ is not a horrible one for dealing with that that you sort of just clog up the ground create a bunch of um, uh, thopters and all these two creatures in one uh, type cards and then just not not necessarily having to clear out the ground, but just make it so no one could profitably attack and then just winning in the air. I don't think it's a horrible um, strategy against the sort of weenie-esque decks. Um, but possibly... Uh, possibly the... just these early artifacts are just too inefficient at what they do it's not difficult for them to um... well, if you stumble in the early game then the uh... other weenie decks are built to punish that, that kind of thing and obviously if you're spending uh, well, even against the weenie deck, seven mana, you might never actually get to that much. But even then, like a four mana for a shot, uh, for a piece of removal is just potentially too inefficient, even if it is over two turns. And if you're having to crack a Travis amulet to um, hit your land drops in the early game, then you're not doing something else. Kind of, I'm struggling to remember whether I even cast Jora once. If I did, I didn't. It didn't happen very often, so I didn't really get to uh, show her off. Uh, I think overall, I think the the most important card in the deck, though, was actually Sign Master Thopterist. Just um, creating that sort of army of uh, of, um, of flyers is both good on defense and a good way to actually start closing out the game. I mean, even if the uh, sacrificing two artifacts to draw a card is kind of inefficient, it's well when you're sacrificing late game Travers amulets or what have you, gleaming barriers will will take seven or you know, anything. It's still fine. Unfortunately, the I mean fundamentally the artifice of the tribe is in standard is super super small, <laughs> so there's not a lot of wiggle room on in terms of that. Um, but yeah, anyway, kind of a bad deck and. Um, Certainly had some fun playing it, <laughs> but that doesn't <laughs> doesn't demonstrate anything about actually how good it is. It's just a bit too inefficient in too many ways, and it's got some good um, catch-up cards, but it's just a little bit too easy to fall behind with it and then not be able to catch back up. So yeah, thanks for watching.